everybody welcome back to the channel it's a freezing day here in uh boils parish louisiana and uh, i'm going to show you guys fort de russie which is an old civil war uh battle site an old fort that served uh as a fort from 1862 to 64. you can see here this bridge behind us right here that brings us to the uh, actual mounds of the, the i'll tell you more about it but the grounds where the fort stood and uh we're gonna show you the cemetery on the other side of the woods over there. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right in and not freeze our butts off too much here if we don't have to. So let's jump right in, let's go. All right guys, so this is, uh, I think it's a bridge that's gonna hold me. You can walk from this open field across the bridge. It feels pretty sturdy. Into the old spot or grounds here where the fort stood. For a very short time over this pretty nice little creek looking area now it's in a Voiles parish which is like east central louisiana essentially man it looks like an old civil war site now a battle did ensue here back in 1864, which is why it only served as a fort from 1862 to 64. Uh, a Confederate army, or part of the Confederate army, was set up here and set up shop in 1862. And then, uh, look, here's the, um, walking up this elevated, you see those mounds in the background over there? I'll walk closer to him. But that's where the actual fort was. There's this uh, concrete monument here. And I'll just read it in case you can't read it. It says, in memory of the slaves who died during the construction of Fort de Russie, November 1862 to March 1864. I'm sorry if my voice is shaking, it's cold out here. <laughs> A lot of just looks like first names. Which is kind of somber and sad because they might not have had a maybe but maybe the slaves didn't have last names a lot of the time on the bottom it says their labors done their works remain somewhere near they rest we're going to go to the cemetery which is adjacent to this it's like on the other side of these woods back there i think they're actually uh, behind those woods right there and uh there are some unmarked graves from that time from the Civil War soldiers and uh, maybe some slaves too. Here's some more stuff. I'll read this real quick. It says, every arrangement has been made at the works below to secure the comfort and well-being of Negroes that can be made. Temporary huts, it's hard to read some of this, have been erected for their shelter. Bountiful rations are issued to them and a skillful surgeon has been sent there provided with medicines to attend them if taken sick i'm not going to read all that but uh that was written by major general richard taylor i'm sure you guys have uh, heard of that name before he spent a lot of time here and was in charge of um let me say he was commander of the district of west louisiana february 1864 and there's another uh, quote. This is hard to read this stuff right here. It might be easier for you guys to see it on the camera, but in real life, it's kind of vague. Um, Captain Wallace, 9th Texas Infantry, Walker's Division, February 10th, 1864. This one says, Oh, how I pity these poor Negroes here. They work them from daybreak until dark and about half seed them. Half feed them, sorry. They look so bad, I never would let them have one of mine to treat I would never let them have one of mine to treat this way I would feed them in the woods first I guess it's referencing the way they were treated out here or at that time in general anyway so looking back here this is the grounds right here the fort you can see that the grounds elevated it's all elevated here and this is you know like any fort and any bat or any 
time frame, they were usually elevated for uh, advantage purposes. You know, elevated positions are always better. And these abandoned mounds here are where, and I'll show you a picture or two from whatever I can find online. I saw a couple sketches of what the fort looked like. I don't know if there's going to be any pictures from that time frame. Probably not. But uh, it may be a drawing or two that I'll post here while I'm talking for you guys. Picnic tables here. Oh, look at that. There's some hunting dogs. Check them out. <laughs> Had a whole crew of them. Those look like twins. One, two, three, four, five of them. Hey, puppies. Hey. What's going on? Looks like some red bone. I wonder, that's a red bone one right there. Looks like. Maybe, maybe not. A bunch of dogs. So anyway, these are the mounds that the fort stood on. There's like another monument back here I'll go take a look at. The dogs are gonna follow us, our new friends. Just imagine an old Civil War fort sitting right here on these mounds. Not to mention the battle that ensued here. Now I'll tell you a little bit about the battle. Um, Nathaniel Banks was the Union general in this area or that was making his way through basically from south through north Louisiana like straight up from the bottom to the north of the state and uh, this is one of the places where he stopped and fought the Confederates and the Confederate troop or troops that were set up right here at Fort DeRussey on right here on the spot where I'm standing and the troops came through and there's a little battle that ensued here uh, that resulted in the Union Army winning this battle and they destroyed the fort that was here and uh, they did that in I guess around early 1864 and um, the Confederates, the, 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 the ironic thing about it is the Confederate troops only lost about four troops. So only about four casualties. But the Union troops, even though they won the battle and destroyed the fort and all that, they lost more soldiers than the Confederates did. And you would ask, well, how does that make sense? But right here on this spot, like where we're looking now, not only did the battle ensue here, but uh, the Union troops, a few of the Union troops, while they were setting up explosives to destroy and blow up and, you know, demolish the fort, they actually blew themselves up, you know, accidentally while they were setting up explosives. So the Confederate, or the Union troops, I think, have between eight and ten casualties from this battle. But a lot of it was self inflicted. That all happened right here. And it could have happened right where we're standing here, right on this very spot where I'm standing here. It could have been where somebody actually died in a Confederate Union battle, in the American Civil War. And it's still beautiful. Very lush looking soil still, very green amongst the trees that most of them, you know, most of them, their leaves die in the winter time, but it's very cold and gloomy today, about a high of 45, and quite windy. So um, I hear my voice shaking a little bit, but let's go see what that monument is over there. I guess I'll, uh, don't want to intrude too much, but I'll just kind of stay on the main thing here so you can get a better view of where this fort stood. And it's so surreal to think about, you know, like what, there was a fort here that was built, brick and mortar building, you know, Typical fort looking building that was all set up right here. A hundred and two, almost 60 years ago.
in anywhere, anytime you're at a place that holds so much history, you know, with especially with, with battles and such and war, wartime things and death and all that, it's always surreal. It's always very, very sad to think about too. People died here. Americans fighting Americans. Different time, and if you really think about it, it wasn't that long ago. Less than 200 years ago. All right, guys. Well, on the edge of the fort area, we're still we haven't. You know, I think the cemetery is right across. Like I said, those woods right there. But there's this lone monument here that celebrates Mr. Uh, Louis Gustav de Russi, who the fort is named after, and. Mr. DeRussi was a West Point graduate. He's actually the oldest West Point graduate that served in the Civil War. And he um, attained the rank of Major General for the Louisiana Militia. And, uh, you know, obviously, he obviously served here and fought here. And um, he was an engineer in the Civil War. And uh, the fort was named after him. His brother actually served also served in the Civil War and there's a fort named after him too. Not in this area though, not in Louisiana. But uh, yeah, so this monument serves as the, not only to memorialize him, but he's actually buried right here too. This is his grave. So uh, pretty nice too, nice monument. And on the sides of it, it has, it says Mexican War right here. Then it says War for Southern Independence right there. And on the back side, it says War of 1812. Just wanted to kind of capture that for you guys and talk about him for a minute. Let's keep on moving along. So yeah, so for lunch today, we're stopping here at the Paragon Casino in Marksville. It's right down the road from everything. We're in between the fort and the cemetery that I'm showing you guys today, but stopping here for some lunch. I've been here a few times. There's an actual alligator habitat in the main part right there in the lobby. I'll show you guys on the way out. And they actually do alligator feedings, like a, like a presentation where they feed the alligators on the last Saturday of every month, which is not today, it's next Saturday. So I'm not gonna be able to make it for that, but uh, maybe one of these days I'll, when I come back and do the, uh, look at this huge, awesome eagle. This is brand new. It's like a 15 foot eagle statue. All right, so like I said, you kind of got to drive around the block to get to the cemetery. Um, but there's a gate here that's open. Uh, looks like it's closed Monday through Wednesday, but it's Saturday and it's closed. So don't believe everything you see. Actually, it's closed Monday through Wednesday. If you um, notice that. 
and we walked down this little dirt road here for about a hundred yards or so, hundred maybe two hundred yards to get to the cemetery. So let's go ahead and uh, jump over this gate here and get to walking. So what we're going to see now is the actual cemetery of the Civil War soldiers that died, marked and unmarked graves, and all that. So I just want to clarify that for you real quick. Okay, so as you walk about, I think about between 150, 200 yards down that little twisty dirt road, you walk right upon the cemetery here, Fort de Russie Cemetery, established in 1862. There's this little gate here. I don't uh, take myself out with it, but there's this uh, quaint little cemetery inside. Now it's not all just Civil War graves. There are graves here from, you know, this one's as recent as, 2005. In fact, that person was born only uh, 18 days before me, October 11th, 1980. And I was born on October 29th, 1980, if I did the math right. 18 days. But uh, so, see, as you can see here, this is a little excerpt of the history of it. So it says both Confederate and Union soldiers buried here during the Civil War, several years after the war. The Union soldiers were disinterred and bodies brought to the Alexandria National Cemetery in Pineville, Louisiana. After the war, the public started burying people here. The cemetery has always depended on volunteers to maintain the grounds and no one has ever had to pay for a plot. That's interesting. We have volunteers to open and close pipe gate at the entrance. That's the gate that we saw earlier that we had to cross over. This continues on today and receives very little donations. We have had donations from friends of Fort de Russie. Um, there's some people that, you know, just donations and stuff like that. People that donate their time and all that. So, but uh, this is pretty much it. This is a grave here, 1886 to 1962. I don't want to, you know, again, I don't want to intrude on people's privacy and focus on all these people's names specifically. I'm not here for that, but you can see there's some pretty old graves here. This one just has a name on it. It looks like Lambert, but, uh, no date on it or anything. Let's read some of the dates off. You get an idea, 1900 to 1915. 1840 to 1914, wow. 1899 to 1990. I like to be respectful of people's graves, especially if I'm not, you know, unless it's a celebrity grave that's a tourist attraction type of thing or if it's somebody i'm actually there to see specifically or family members of my own i try not to get too much into you know just random people's graves you know i don't that's I'm not really here for that and you, i've said that on other videos before i just want to show you the cemetery though and in the back of the cemetery is where some of the unmarked graves are for the civil war soldiers union and confederate who died right there at the fort like basically across those trees right there if you can see it right through these trees straight ahead is where the fort is like the mounds and all that and you may or may not be able to see it in the camera here but uh, i can see it with my own eyes you can see where the mounds are so it's it's basically separated by just a, you know maybe a hundred yards or so if that of thick tree brush now here's some of the ones, sorry, I'm talking and not paying attention. But like here's some here, 1855 to 1893. These are some very old ones right here. Born 1880, it's hard to tell what that is. 1886, maybe 1906. 1982 to 18 or 1960. So like the, the sign said in the front, a lot of the civil, a lot of the, the soldiers that died here were interred or, you know, reinterred or buried over there in Alexandria and Pineville, which is I'd say about, you know, 30 minutes from here, 30, 45 minutes away from where we are, where we are now. So a lot of them, if not all of them, maybe have been removed from here 
and brought to Alexandria. But this is the way they laid. This is where they were buried for years and years and years. For many years. Those soldiers were buried right here in unmarked graves. And the research I did, I remember there was a sign that actually said, or maybe not a sign, but a notice posted in a cemetery that said, you know, be respectful of that back portion because there are unmarked graves of Civil War soldiers. Now, obviously that sign's not here anymore, but the sign that we did read is still here explaining that, what I just told you, that they are now officially buried in the neighboring town or city of Alexandria in Pineville. But this is it, this is a cemetery. Real quaint, real small, not big at all. But I wanted to include it as part of the blog since I was showing you guys the fort. Anyway. Well, folks, as you can see, as we're walking away from the Duracy Cemetery here, going back down the dirt road towards my truck, um, that's pretty much it. I, you know, you got to see the fort and the grounds where the fort stood. You got to see General DeRussi's memorial grave and then the cemetery behind me here. Um, again, I don't really ever do any ghost hunting or anything like that, so I don't really make vlogs about that stuff. I'll do spooky things sometimes, but uh, there is folklore about this cemetery uh, that people have said they've experienced, like any cemetery that's old like this. Uh, some of it is, uh, some people have said that there are these entities or whatever demons or whatever that they call devil dogs or devil hounds or whatever that have they seen little black figures that look like i guess dogs or animals that are, have uh followed them or something and uh are, the, the neat thing about that is that they said that those shadowy black devil hounds or whatever have always followed them uh when they're driving away from or walking away from the cemetery usually at night uh usually they came around when somebody a woman was in the group or was one of the people and if they were pregnant so if there was a pregnant woman then those those devil hounds or whatever they call them would follow them like they jump in the back of trucks and stuff and kind of terrorize them i guess so there's that uh people around the area have said that they they do and have always heard battle um uh, like battle sounds battle sight sounds like guns and cannons or whatever they used back then so that's a lot of, you hear that a lot of, about a lot of Civil War battle sites. Um, even around here uh, in my hometown, the sites, the, the battles that happened in those areas, you hear people say that, you know, they'll hear battle sounds or whatever. So uh, a little bit of folklore about, you know, hauntings and stuff, like any old cemetery. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that. I didn't really want to focus on that. I, didn't, I definitely didn't want to make that part of the vlog. I didn't, you know, meet ghost hunting and all that stuff. So, uh Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I love those old Civil War things, his, uh, history in general like that. Uh, seeing where the, the fort stood on those mounds, it's real somber, kind of sad to know that um, that fort stood, it was built there and it got destroyed and people died there. Americans fighting Americans. It was a terrible time in American history, really. Um, and then seeing the cemetery where the soldiers were buried in unmarked graves there. But now, and it's good to know that now they're in more official, um, you know, more, uh, you know, better graves now. They're not in unmarked areas anymore. Now they've been reinterred into places that, uh, into graves that are more probably recognized. Whether whether or not they know the names of any of them or, or some of them or all of them, whatever the case may be and all that. But, uh, yeah, so... It's cool to see stuff like that. And I wanted to add this, the cemetery to the vlog since we saw the fort and it's right next door. So if you guys do come, keep in mind that it's separate. You're going to have to go drive to the fort and you got to kind of come retrace your steps, go back and then go back around the block to get to the cemetery. But you can find it all online. And so hope you guys have a great day. It's cold and windy and cloudy here. So I hope it's nicer where you are. I'm sure some of you are suffering through snow right now. And, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next one, and goodbye. All right, guys, so I can't believe you're going to let me end the video without saying my catchphrase. So without further ado, don't forget to stay cool, stay tuned, <laughs> but more importantly, don't forget to stay tuned and stay cool. Now I feel better.
Now I can close out the video. You guys have a great day. Love you. See you on the next one. Goodbye.